there it's Friday afternoon I thought I would change it up a little bit this week and I, I might post one again on Sunday it depends but uh, that's mainly because I finished my project earlier and I've got the video done and everything's ready so I've got a little bit of time that I could do a number of things and I have a huge number of projects that I'm going to be doing and can do Except I want to talk about something that I shouldn't probably do. But I think it would be interesting. Okay? You know, you got people who say, well, like when you're talking about, you know, what you're doing with your life, you should follow your passion, right? You should do what you want to do. However, the reality of it is, is that you should be doing what you're good at. Because you might have a passion to be an actor, like, look at Quentin Tarantino, for example. He wants to be an actor. He wanted to be an actor. And he's been in a few films, actually. But he is not a good actor. He's a good, he's a great director. That's what he's good at. So following his passion, it's not a good idea. Right? For me, I'm good at what I'm doing. I'm good at a, at a number of things, actually. But if I were to follow my passion, I'd be making speakers day and night. I'd be making and designing speakers day and night. And I would be totally immersed in that world. Okay? Because I know, I know, I know a fair bit about speakers, but I do, I'm just scratching the surface, actually, of what I could possibly know if I got deep, deep, deep into it. So... Yeah, you got to do what you're, you're good at in this life. You know, some people, they're really good at pumping gas. Not that anybody needs a gas pumper anymore, unless you go up north of here. I got shocked when I went up there last year, and I stopped for gas, and there was an actual guy pumping the gas. But you get my point. You got to do what you're good at, or what you can actually make a living at, because making a living is what's important in this world. You know, you can't pursue your hobbies unless you got someone to pay for that. Anyway, to get to the point of this video, I have my old 18 inch woofer. If you saw that video, this is the one that I took out. Well, I took both of them out. I have the other one too. However, that's still intact. I cut the cone out of this one, more or less just to have a look inside because I've got other plans for this. All right, and that's what I wanna talk about here. Now the plan I have for this may be crazy, but I want to build a much bigger woofer with this, like a 24 inch cone woofer. So the outside diameter of the woofer would be somewhere around 28, maybe even, yeah, I would say 28 inches by the time, or more, it could be up to 30 inches wide. So this one is 18, and that means it's 18 on the outside rim. So using the same measurement standard, this new one, this homemade one, would be 30 inches. So what I want to do with this is I want to use I want to use this as the starting point. I want to use the motor. Now the motor of a speaker is this thing back here. It's the magnet and the voice coil. However, I open this up. I'm going to do that again now. I put the comb back on to keep the dust out because this, you know, workshop gets dusty in here. So let's pull that off. And I thought that the I thought that the voice coil was bigger. But this one is I think it's two and a half. No, it's three inches. I thought I was gonna, it was gonna be a, like a four inch. But I could look at the spider. The spider is what you have here. That's this thing here, okay? That keeps the bottom of the cone moving in the, in the right you know, way, up and down, or in and out, okay? I thought that the voice coil was bigger. I thought that I was going to be able to use it as it is, but, I'm thinking now that rather than use this voice coil, I would make a new 
voice coil that actually goes around the outside of the magnets. Now, this is not a new idea. There's a, a speaker manufacturer, Dynaudio, that made all of its speakers up until a certain point with the magnets inside the voice coil. Now, you can't just do that. You have to have something on the outside as well. And I'd have to build all that. But basically what that would give me is a voice coil that is like seven and a quarter inches in diameter. So quite big. And okay, the, the reason why, okay, to get the, to do that, I think I'm gonna get more strength, motor strength from it. I'm not sure, okay? I know, like I said, I know uh, a good bit about this, but I'm not, you know, 100%. I think I'm gonna get more motor strength but I'll be sacrificing excursion. However, an excursion is, means how much the cone moves in and out. Like when you make the Vigor voice coil, you shorten the uh, winding and then it doesn't, it doesn't move as far. Whereas if you shrink the voice coil down, uh, the winding is longer and it moves further. So that's the trade-off right there. However, like I said, with a, such a big um, uh, cone area, you don't need it to move that far to produce a lot of bass. So that's what I was thinking about doing. I was actually gonna take these magnets off of here, preserve as much of this as I possibly can. I would have to get some steel and make an outer part so that I could concentrate the magnetic flux in a smaller area as in there'd be a plate that goes around here, the round plate. It would go up around the uh, sides here in a kind of a ring. I don't know where I would get the ring. I've got a piece of pipe out in my shed. That's eight inch pipe, I think. That might work. So I could cut a ring from that. That's steel pipe. And then add another part on the bottom to give me that gap, the voice coil gap that I need between the magnet and or the the plate that I would put on top of the magnet steel plate and the outside part because you need a gap that concentrates the magnetic um, force or flux I'm not sure about the terms okay like I said not an expert but I thought it'd be interesting to try and the voice coil I would wind it on uh, aluminum flashing and that's what I think I would make the cone with as well although I'm not sure I could make the cone I could make the cone with paper except I would need a form and then you can make the form with with aluminum but if you're gonna go to the trouble of making the uh, an, uh, a form from aluminum then that can be your cone all right the only tricky part about making it from aluminum is how it joins all right to form the cone because you're working with flat material. So I've been thinking all kinds of schemes of making kind of a scarf joint and epoxying that on, or even just trying to do a butt joint and then um, put a, like a, a scab behind it, another piece of metal, another piece, but then that makes the cone heavier on that side. Although I could put another piece on the other side to counterbalance it, or I could put four like stiffener pieces even right but then every bit of mass that you add to the cone makes things different as well so you can't have a cone that's too heavy otherwise it's not going to be efficient enough there are so many different trade-offs here okay and uh, it's quite a juggling act to get something that actually works properly that's not going to take 10,000 watts to make it move I'm right now thinking of my sub amplifier, which is close to a thousand watts. So that would really make it move. So I just think it would be interesting. I think it'd be an interesting project. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that kind of thing. Most of you won't be, I'm sure. Although on this channel, I don't know, right? So magnet from this mainly, um, the, the surround, the rubber surround, I've got a 26 inch inner tube for bicycle. 
still wrapped up. I bought two of these. I cut the other one up for different things. Uh, but well, that's something else I'm going to have to figure out. The other way to make a surround is an accordion fold, very much like the spider inside here. You can see that, right? That's an accordion fold, and that allows the thing to move up and down. So, or in and out, as a, a woofer should be moving. I've got a lot of things to figure out before I even get started on this. And that's to say, I should warn you that I'm just talking about this, all right? Because it, it popped into my head. I was watching another video on something, you know, related, and it popped into my head, and I have to come out here and clean up my shop because it's a big mess again, and I thought I would make a quick video talking about this. But this is, like, this is sometime in the future, all right? And I might, I might, you know, I might come out here one evening and just get started and, and push on and get it done, or it might be months down the road, okay? I just thought I would talk about it. I find it interesting to talk about these things because I'm passionate about that, understand? We fill it around for a while with other travelers of the night, playing hogs of the road. Then we headed west. What we were after now was the old surprise visit. That was a real kick and good for laughs and lashings of the old ultra-violent. <laughs> 